What's up guys, Kyle with Kyle's Custom Baits here and today we're going to be making a Whopper Popper. We're going to try at least. But I'm going to show you guys the steps and uh, hopefully by the time we're done we have a fish for Whopper Popper we can go out and try to catch some with it. Join me. So guys, the first thing you want to do is decide how big you want your bait to be. Uh, I decided three inches was plenty. So I measured out three inches on this grid paper here and drew it out. Um, I'm actually probably going to draw another stencil out and use this one just to save so I have uh, one to trace off of if it works right so I can make more with that same shape. Then you want to decide where you want to have your tail, how far up. And I uh, decided about three quarters of an inch is fine. All I'll need for one this size. And uh, make sure you, what size wood you're putting it on, uh, drawing it. I'm putting on one inch wood, so I made sure I wasn't going beyond the size of that. So I drew out my stencil, uh, my other stencil, and uh, cut it out with a knife. Went to go put it on the wood and realized I'm currently out of pieces long enough. So I did a thing. Um, I'm going to be cutting the end off anyway. So I went ahead and just cut the body. And then uh, for the tail, I just looked at some scrap wood I had here. And I uh, found one that the tail would work off. I cut that end off with the stencil. And then I glued it. Uh, just Elmer's glue, that way it'll come off. Uh, it'll just be easier to sand everything together, especially with this being such a little piece. Um, I've done this on a few other things fooling around. And uh, you want to be careful not... Uh, to put a lot of Elmer's glue because it actually does get difficult to take off. There's a lot, but a uh, super glue would have just been too ridiculous. I would have had to cut it anyway. But I'll be able to sand this and then um, pop it off and then to do the rest with the plopper tail. So the paddle tail, I'm just taking uh, some of the plastic I have and I. Uh, I put this end in the vise, or just one end of it. I've made a few just fooling around. But, uh, and you just heat it up. You can use a torch. Uh, I've got a torch. was going to use that, and I realized I have a heat gun. And it's just easier. And heat it. And uh, I just took some drill bits, uh, the size curve I wanted. I took one around that size, the end of it. And after it's heated, I was tapping on it. And you could feel it was flexible, so I stopped. And take the drill bit and just angle it the way you want it and start bending it you just got to be quick about it and I went back and changed multiple times it's fine as long as you're not heating it to the point it's just drooping itself um, twist it a little bit there and I made another one that's more rounded uh, it's got a lot bigger bend to it but that's the way I wanted it. Um, and I've got a little angle in that bend too, so it'll throw a little bit more uh, out different ways. So those were some that I just made fooling around. Uh, I'm going to make another one here. I'll show you guys. Uh, let's see. Kind of plastic. The plastic I'm using is clear polycarbonate plastic sheet. It's 0 .063 by 12 by 12 inches. Uh, just cheap stuff off Amazon. But <clears throat> I've got a little stencil here. I want to make the tail a little bit rounded. So I'm going to mark off uh, just at the top here where I'm going to be uh, sanding. I'll sand it off to get it nice and rounded. Okay. 
So I've got it shaved off. Uh, just went over the belt sander for about three seconds. I'm gonna put it in the vise here. Got my drill bit. Again. twist and it's already back to hard it's still a little warm but I want to put a little bit more of a twist right in here because these this goes on diagonal on the bait Watch out if you give it too much heat, it'll unbend from where you kinked it already. A little bit more on top, I want to put a little, a little bit more of a dent in the middle there. Whopper plopper blade. So now I've got the tops and bottoms uh, sanded down. I'm going to start working on the edges to get it the thickness I wanted. I'm going to taper off down towards the back. Uh, just running on my sanding belt here. So after running it over uh, a few times through the sander, Curved it off a little bit. Um, I'll do the rest of the sanding with sandpaper and uh, little sand blocks. Uh, you got to be real careful with the sander if you're trying to detail because it will just pull everything off. And you can always take more off. You can never put more back on. But that's what the tail looks like. And uh, I'm going to start looking at uh, my drill bits and figuring out what sizes we need for line ties. We'll get into that. Now uh, I've got it marked where I'm going to drill the holes for the line and hook ties. Right there in the middle, there's for the line tie, the connector, and one in the middle of the hook. Ooh, I about forgot. One thing you guys, uh, when you're working with the basswood at least, um, you want to poke the spot just a little indent there uh, so your bit doesn't take off everywhere just got a little screwdriver I'm just denting in there so the bit sits in and that makes a huge difference because your bits will take off and tear a bunch off the top as well
Um, for the tail, we're going to go all the way through uh, for obvious reasons. The hook will be coming out through it. bit is just a hair too short to get all the way through. Off, off centered on my line, my hole a little bit, but that's fine because the hole will actually end up probably needing bigger. That's all set. I'm going to try to show you guys how I make my line ties. I ain't really got much of an angle to get to it with the camera, but uh, just take my wire here. Right, and I got my drill bit and my vise here. So let's take the two ends, put them together, even them up. drill here chuck out just enough where it's still uh, I got room to put them in there tighten it up and uh, I've talked about it before but uh, if you're doing this you want to uh, you want to go in reverse doing this that way it'll screw in um, like a regular screw righty tighty lefty loosey when you're putting it in the bait do that and reverse and just there we go slide it off there and then I usually do a big long piece but I'm just doing this one because I already have some made I just wanted to show you guys how I do it and uh Take it, decide how long you want it. Uh, I like to make them a little bit longer um, just because sometimes the drill will uh, damage right where it's connected. We'll just cut off a piece and just repeat the step. Ends together, put them in the chuck. And it's fine if they're coming out the side, angled, anything like that, as long as they're caught in the chuck. Tighten it up. Once again, going in reverse, and uh, it's like I said, it's fine if it's angled or anything like that. It shakes a little bit, tighten it up a few, few turns. It's right there, twisted it. Just take a pair of pliers or something. Grab it by the head, make sure the head coming straight up. Clip off your excess. And there's the line tie. Just do that for however many you need. So now with everything cut, got my line drawn here. I'm gonna take my Dremel and uh, etch in there a line just enough to squeeze this uh, paddle tail in there and then we'll glue it shouldn't shouldn't take much um, depending on how it looks when I put it in there I might make it deeper I'm gonna start as shallow as possible but still enough room for it to fit in there and uh, super glue it that'll be 
be right back with that. All right, guys, so uh, <clears throat> I got the tail glued in. Um, I did have to fool with it a little bit. I used the torch and kind of scorched a little bit, but uh, I had to reshave it just a hair. It was far, a little bit too far over, but uh, it's going to be painted after everything's done anyway. And I'll start working on the hardware here. So for my end piece, I made another tie and uh, have this bead. Uh, I've got some of them laying around for different little stuff. I've got them in little kits and stuff over the years, but this one I think came off of a, a worm I took the spinner off of to make a lure. But uh, I've got it on there just as a little bit of a stopper and a gap with the where the hook will be in there. And, I made it pretty long that way because it's going to have a lot of a lot of pull on it. If it's... There we go. Perfect. So all right, I changed it. Um, took the bead off and put it there. Um, the tails, this tail tie is actually not affecting it, and I'll be putting a, a split ring on as, with the hook, so it'll put it a little bit more distance away from the tail. It's loose, not completely free, but enough for the water will chug it through. Just dip, 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 dip. All right, so uh, I got that one glued. It's the tricky ones um, on that, the only glue I put, I covered glue on the, uh, the ring, not the ring, but the the bottom of it going into the bay. I dipped it in that, get it all the way in real quick and it dries. Um, I might try to go back and dab a dot on the ball because I don't believe the ball is spinning. That's fine. I just need it as a guard so it's not rubbing up against this. But we're gonna, gonna put the other hook ties in here. Another hook tie on the line tie. It's probably going to be a hair too long. So that's what makes it way easier. I got to cut off just a smidge. Come dry back out like a spree. Eventually. <laughs> All right, I'll take my snaps here. I'll go back and glue this here in a minute. I did this one, this hole pretty good, pretty deep, so this might fit, but it does have a little bit of a kink in it. Looks like that's as far as it's going to go. It might go a little bit further. I don't know. There we go. Just enough. I'll go back and glue these in. We'll make some eye holes. I've got a little, a few teeny little holes there just to. I got lined up, I did with the Dremel to make sure I had them the right spots on both sides. 
just say it, we'll do that. All right, so I've decided the size of eye I want on it is uh, these bottom ones here. And I got my bit. one fourth bit <clears throat> perfect size so I'm gonna get my torch and my clamps here there we go. make sure it's good and secure Right there. There's a little bit of scorch running up the, the nose on both sides there. It's from the smoke, but uh, it's going to be painted. And I might even go back over the eyes with a sander just to, in case there's any little bristly parts right there on the end. Put this in there before I burn myself. All right, now that everything's uh, glued in, I did add a little bit more glue to that. Working good. Um, we're about to do the next step, which is super important. I'm going to seal it, uh, water seal. That way, if I if I decide to, I can take it and test it out before I paint it. But uh, I always do that before I paint in clear coat. It's just another layer of protection for for it to hopefully last a lot longer. But uh. Thompson water seal you can get at Walmart, anywhere, any hardware store. Um, I just dip it in there and uh, I'll hang it up by the eyes and uh, let it drip. And just make sure you don't get any uh, bubbles locked up in the ties here. Um, it can be annoying to get stuff out of or, or when you're putting your hooks on. But. I'm gonna do that and let it uh, dry, and then I'll I'll get back to you. Well, guys, there you go. Um, it has been sealed. It's still way too cold outside for me to go out and try this. I'm not freezing to death just to swim it. Um, I'll upload a video later on of it swimming. Um, I might already paint it as well. Uh, I'm gonna try to get videos of me painting it for you guys, but uh. Other than being painted and clear coated, the hook's on. It's ready to test out. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you next time.